All right, I'm going to try to make this as simple as I can. I drew a picture for you. Here's the sun. Here's the earth. Here's the moon. Here's space. From the sun, it sends something out that hits the earth, and it, it makes solar sails go through space, and it, uh, it hits solar panels and uh, excites electrons, and uh, it grows plants, and it creates heat and light and all that. So, obviously, between here where it's emitted and between here where it's received, something is happening there. This is what I'm saying is happening, is you're having a spinning of electrons. Here you have the sun, which has its nuclear particles, and spinning around those nuclear particles is a little electrons. They're one eighteen hundredth of the mass of the proton. They shake so violently that they achieve escape velocity, and zip, they go out of here. They spin out of here, and they spin in space where there is no nuclear material to collide with, so they just look dark, but there's still matter, it is an electron that's spinning, and there is a weight to it, and uh, there is an energy there, and it's just not used or seen or interacting in space. It is dark energy and dark matter. And there's different frequencies that come out of here. There's high frequencies. They spin very fast. The faster they spin, the more angular momentum they have. The more angular momentum, the more impact they have, that means their mass is greater. All it is is energy equals mass how if you're saying they all go the same speed which I'll, I'll buy that i don't i'm not a, fighting that but i'm not i don't think it's true but I'll, i won't fight it they spin out of here at different frequencies the faster they spin the more mass they have the harder they hit ultraviolet da, 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 da. the lower they spin the less hit they hit and uh, the less energy they have the less spin and from the moon you can only get so much spin because it's re-radiated that's why red of, of blood seen here is not seen here. Here it's seen as black blood. Alright, that's case one. Alright, case number two, there's no such thing as neutrons. They are negative massive particles and that is why they are always firmly attached to protons. They're just negative particles that exceed the weight of the proton. Therefore the two of them together combined have a net negative mass, a, ne a net negative uh, field. So you have the charge is a positive, it's point is 1.672, that's a proton. You have the charge a negative is 1.674, that's a, a negatron. It used to be called a neutron, but it won't be anymore, it'll be negatrons. The, the electron is a negative and it's one one eighteen hundredth of the uh, of the proton of the nuclear particles. Okay, so one one eighteen hundredth is the tiniest, tiniest particle, which is, that's the electron, smaller than quarks and all that business. Now, you have a net negative mass of 0 .002, 1.674 minus 1.672 equals 0 .002, which is the net negative nuclear mass. That's all there is to it. Now, the conclusion is the excess weight Therefore, it has an excess charge of negativeness, makes it a negatron. It's not a neutron. There's no neutrons rolling around on the floor. I mean, it just it doesn't make any sense at all. Um, what I have here, uh, there's no new, there's no neutral bits in, in in anywhere in there. Now, this negatron being negative creates the quantum distance that the electrons they just can't penetrate into there. So they create that cloud of electrons which is the orbitals, and then the first orbital stacks up, then the next ones can't get into that one, so they stack up, then the next one, the next one. Anyway, the layers of electrons collect, they create the shells, each repelling the next, the end. All right, you like Wile E. Coyote? <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a little Wile E. Coyote here. All right, this is energy. It's about how matter works and energy works. Tesla had it exactly perfectly correct. It's 100% vibration. If there's no vibration, there's nothing. There's no nothing. So you have, you have your, your um, atom, and the center has your negatrons and your protons, so your ne neg negatives and positives glued together like the strongest magnets. 
And that's just obvious. Now, around that, there's a negative repulsion. So the first one settled in here. There's two little electrons nestled in here. Then the next ones start to collect. And they have a proximity to the earlier ones. And then they collect in a shell and a shell. Now, when you collide coming in here with high-powered negatrons, I mean uh, electrons, what they will do is drive these like little ping pongs where they're boing and they're going to fly off of there. The first thing they're going to do is vibrate this whole thing as energy, as, as heat. Vibration is heat, is friction, is energy, is heat. And, and some of it's going to bounce out of here, the stuff that doesn't collect in here. Now, black, for some reason, has an, it, 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 it wants to collect all the electrons that hit it and stay there. Now, and then it will create a lot of heat, so it's not giving off any light. But a lot of things will give off complete light and they don't get hot like white. And it's strictly to do with the, really it's transition metals, it's metals inside of there. It's the metals and the minerals and the, and the atoms and the molecules, the crystalline structures, that's what it is. It's as simple as that. Now hydrogen has no proton at all. Hydrogen has only a negatron and that has to be obvious because there's a negative charge in the center keeping that other negative out here, which is only one of these and one of those. If it was a proton, you'd suck the thing right in, there'd be nothing. That's just the way it is. Now, um, all right, so let's go right up through from matter. Matter sits there doing nothing, just being nothing. Then all of a sudden you're banging a little bit of sound and it does that and it's sort of the, the molecules vibrate. And then as they vibrate enough, they start to create some heat. The, the little, these start to bounce around in here. As they start the heat, they get hotter and hotter and hotter. The heat, now all of a sudden you can see some, some are bouncing out of here, but they're just going zzz, 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 just barely bouncing out. And then it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, spinning, and they're crazy. They're going flying out of here through the vacuum of space in outer space in, 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 in uh, uh, the environment we live in. We're going to see it as light and, and, and we feel warmth and so forth. Um, and it might be, you know, have ultraviolet, whatever it is. It, it could, and, and the faster it spins, the more energy it has, the more impact it has, and the more damage it causes. There are only one eighteen hundredth of the proton of, of the protons or the negatrons, so they don't cause the, the damage that nuclear events do because they're eighteen hundred times more powerful. So all there is to it. All right, the, the theory, uh, well, first of all, there's a negatron theory, which I just showed you negatrons. But this is also includes electron emission vortex theory. And that's where electrons are emitted from their source, and they spin away just like this. This would be an electron. That's the electron right there itself. It's a particle. As Einstein said, it's a particle and a wave. Well, yeah, it is. It's a particle here. And if you look at it from the side, it's a wave. And the, the faster it's spinning, the more angular momentum it would have and the more impact that would have. If that was just spinning slowly and hit your finger, it wouldn't do anything. But if it was spinning at 10,000 revolutions and that hit your finger, it would probably cause damage. That is the nature of light. And that is what is not understood in the vacuum of space with no nuclear materials to interact with, nothing to bounce off of. It is dark energy and dark matter, and it fills the entire vacuum of space. The entire vacuum of space is completely filled with this animating, animating light. It's the animating breath of God. It's what, it's what creates every living thing, and it creates everything, and the earth is growing exponentially. Because whatever hits here is not leaving as much. Very, very little is leaving. Most of it's staying here. And that is just a fact, my friends. All right, Rodney Warren and I do these experiments together, and he has come up with an experimental Venturi light accelerator, which is freaking amazing. And that is what's coming out of there. Now look at this. That is light from a laser. You see this here? You can see it's obviously being sucked into his Venturi. This is the Venturi accelerator. And it's coming in as pure red laser light. And look at the glow it's creating. That is Cheryenkov radiation, I believe, which means an extremely high glowy frequency of light. As it cascades through the Venturi accelerator, it 
it, it interacts with unrestricted space and begins to deteriorate back to its normal uh, red. And you see it coming out of here. Eventually, coming down a little further, it turns very red. Now, uh, that is that picture. Now, that is the picture of a normal uh, wave. No acceleration, no nothing. It's just floating through the air. And these are pictures taken directly in air. These are, and now, look at this. This is what happens after the accelerator coming from this direction. Hold on, I gotta back you out of here. Alright, here you go. See here, this it's the accelerator's over here where the cursor is. And it's coming this way. Alright? Now, you see here how these light particles are just chaotic and bright well glowy-ish. And then over here they you look actually see the particles. These are the two particles. And this happens two waves it appears after the acceleration. And these comes and you saw the waves before. And they, these are like almost, this is what I, I believe is the strobe effect. In other words, this entire thing is wave, wave. You see them here? They come like down here. We're seeing like a length of, of, uh, of light. And you see this. Now, uh, let me see what else we have. All right. This is, this is a one of a kind. Or, and Rodney it was copious quantities of, of, of pictures. He is a, uh, he's a picture machine. Now, this is the light disks, and these are what you just saw, those red disks, and they float through space as light waves. That's what they are. And now you see this one's purple, and this one's red, and they, you know, could little different colors. Now look at this. This is the cool one. These are coming through that accelerator in such chaos that they are forcing each other to interact, and that I have never seen before. And look at this. That is is a mini disc. It's a mini disc. I just, this is you see this wave here? It's coming through here and it crashed into this wave. You see it deformed this way and it is forcing a discharge here. That's all I can say. I mean, I've never seen one of these before. But this is coming right out of the accelerator. Now let me see if we have any. See, this is what happens. Right after the accelerator, we're looking into the accelerator. Uh, we're standing behind the camera looking in, down, right into the accelerator. Point blank range like it's going to slap you in the face. And these are the spinning trails of the light. And you can see as it comes out of here, it's cherry, you know, the cherry Yankov radiation is the first thing. And then it hits unrestricted space and it begins to slow down. As it slows down, it does this spinning and you see some high, still some high, denser looking energies and, they, and some slower ones, oranges and so forth. It's gonna, it does this chaotic stuff coming out of there. Uh, and here's the green laser. Now same architecture, same, um, same little guys here, the little atomic eyeballs there and they, that's the same two waves. And this is the green laser, and you can see that it's, it's, it's exactly identical in architecture to the uh, red laser. However, it is, you see the frequencies of light are higher. And that's the, that's the accelerator. And we're back to this. Now, I have tons and tons and tons and tons of these pictures. And, uh, and, and it is what it is. We need somebody to look at this that has you know, more abilities than we have. We just did what we did, you know, because we're just sort of experimenting, but, you know, it would be nice if somebody look at it. And I've tried to get a hold of everybody, MIT, Stanford, and they're just not interested. So I'm just putting it out, taking it to the streets.